Hi, welcome to Think Human. I'm Chris and in this video I want to talk about black holes. By far one of the strangest objects known in our universe. Uh, so what is a black hole? To be fair, it wouldn't even be fair uh, to call black hole an object. The more precise uh, description would be a black hole is a specific configuration of space-time. So it is a region of space-time with such high gravitational force that nothing can escape it, not even light, and that's why they're called black. So black holes are really strange, and uh, there is so much to talk about them, so let's just start uh, from a bit more further away and move closer inwards. It uh, would probably make sense. So black holes, uh, the lightest black holes are the mass three times of our sun, and there are some black holes that can be the mass of billions of our solar uh, sun mass so billions of times the mass of uh, stars can be the largest ones at the center of each galaxy it is believed there's a supermassive black hole in the center of every large galaxy that's like the core the heart of a galaxy so uh, a black hole uh, the smaller a black hole is if you get close to it the, the faster you would die from small black holes the difference in gravity between short distances of time is so huge that if you were to fall into a small black hole, let's say a black hole with the mass of three times our sun, then uh, let's say you fall feet, feet first, then what would happen is that the gravity near your feet would be stronger than the gravity at your head, so your whole body would be stretched much more at the legs until eventually what's going in the black hole is a stream of atoms and it uh, has a cool name, it's called spaghettification, that's an actual term uh, in astrophysics. So you would be just so quickly uh, spaghettified that you would be just a stream of atoms going into the center of the black hole. With a bigger black hole, with a supermassive black hole, these can be, like I said, billions of times the mass of our sun. And these can be as big as an entire solar system, as our solar system, for example. And now uh, there is this event horizon around the black hole. And this event horizon is the point of no return. Once you pass this point, nothing can get out. And... This isn't a metaphor, this isn't saying that, you know, the gravity is so high that, you know, you're falling in. No, it's literally, physically, the only future you have once you pass the event horizon is in the center of the black hole. That is called the singularity, the heart of the black hole, uh, which is said by our current understanding of mathematics that it has infinite density, this singularity, gravitation singularity. So, um, the event horizon. Uh, we could never see inside because no light could escape it. But uh, we said before, in, in small black holes you would die pretty quickly, but in big supermassive black holes you could cross this point of no return, this event horizon, and nothing would change for you. From your perspective, your point of view, uh, you notice nothing. It's perfectly normal. And now here's a massive paradox in, in, in relativity, in study of black holes two points of view, let's say Bob and Alice, and Bob is the one falling, falling into a black hole and Alice is looking at him. So Bob is falling, like we said, he passes the point of no return and he feels perfectly fine. But what Alice sees is that Bob gets closer to the black hole and he gets redder and redder because the gravity is uh, higher and higher uh, because the light waves are stretched more and more uh, the closer Bob gets to the black hole. Uh, essentially, like same thing happens with the sound, like when a drain is coming, the sound is compressed and it's high pitched. And when it's moving by, then the sound waves are, you know, the drain is also moving away from you. So the sound waves are extended and so the uh, the frequency of the sound sounds lower. Uh, same way with light, uh, if there's so much gravity that's also pulling it, it's stretching it uh, by this pulling, uh, then uh, things become red shifted and that means the light has been stretched and eventually uh, Bob, Bob's image gets so stretched uh, that it fades into red, into infrared and then just fades away. But what Alice sees is Bob freezes on the horizon. He Alice never sees Bob past the event horizon, the point of no return. But from Bob's, per Bob's perspective, point of view, Bob passed it without any issues at all. But Alice saw her kind of burn up at the event horizon. Now what's the really strange part is that both of these points of views are accurate 
and correct. They are both equally correct descriptions of reality. And this is profoundly strange. Why this is allowed and why it's said that this is allowed is because after the event horizon, essentially what happens inside the event horizon, the event horizon and the singularity inside is not a part of our universe, essentially. Once Bob passes the event horizon, he's not part of this universe anymore. And no information could travel from the black hole to Alice uh, to show that Bob actually survived. So this, in a strange way, is why it's allowed, because no information about Bob actually surviving uh, gets gets to Alice or has any chance of getting to Alice. Now, uh, before Bob falls in totally, uh, there is a point around the event horizon where light can essentially orbit. It's an unstable orbit, but light can orbit. So this is called the photon sphere, where there's a flash of light because you're going through this kind of uh, sphere that's around the black hole that's entirely made of light and you get past it. And it's argued whether this uh, whether this light is actually you know fries you up like uh, you know like Alice sees that Bob goes through this light and essentially burns up, or it's like harmless and nothing happens. So no one no one really knows. And our laws of physics break down near uh, such incredible objects as black hole. Now what's even stranger? We talked to, I talked before about how when you enter the black hole. Uh, you end up in the singularity. What is in your future is the singularity. Um, and it's not a metaphor for it has so strong gravity, it's literally. What happens after you pass the event horizon is space and time in effect become reversed, they switch places. So instead of uh, every second moving closer to the future, every second moves you closer to the center of the black hole, the singularity. And in in space, if you move around in space, only thing you could do is get also closer to the center of the black hole, the singularity. It's really strange to wrap your head around, but like saying that once you're inside a black hole after the event horizon, let's say you fall in with a spaceship and you point your rockets outwards and you, you know, hit the gas, whatever, and you try to accelerate out from the black hole. That would be exactly the same as me saying that I'm going to go into my car and trying to drive away from next Tuesday. Like there's no way to do that. You cannot escape the future. So the center of the black hole, once you enter it, literally becomes the future. It's the only possible future. Now this is uh, interesting and it's really well and really well explained by Ben Rose diagrams which uh, show all the possible, uh, you know, interactions and going through space and time, but that's another story, but profoundly weird. Uh, space and time, in effect, switching places in the center, in the actual singularity. No one knows exactly what might be there. Infinite density in nature, infinities aren't really looked kindly upon because, you know, there's no explanation to infinity. Like same way as, you know, universe could be infinite in extent, but that's a bit of a different story. Uh, but, um, so this infinite gravitation point, there are some uh, theories that uh, say that black holes could be connected. So indeed, uh, two black holes could be connected and there's like a wormhole, uh, a kind of tunnel in space and time <clears throat> that connects two black holes. And the black holes could be, you know, at different parts of the universe, but they would be connected by like, you know, a few seconds through this wormhole that's between them. But in natural sense, no wormholes really uh, form between black holes. But uh, also something about black holes, uh, they're not vacuum cleaners. Black holes don't suck anything in. They work by gravity, just like any other massive body in our uh, universe that we live in. Uh, same way, if you take a black hole that's the size of the sun and replace the sun out by a black hole with the same mass, all that will happen is that it will get really cold and really dark in eight minutes after the light takes time to reach the Earth. Uh, but gravitationally orbits, everything would stay the same. So. Um, Black holes, profoundly strange things. There's so much to talk about, uh, but for now, this would be it. It says some interesting ideas about black holes, hopefully interesting. So uh, hopefully also something to think about and hope you got something interesting out of this. So thank you so much for watching and take care.